Hey, Dr. C here with you. Let's talk about supporting your thyroid with essential nutrients and vitamins. For starters, let's give a quick overview of the thyroid gland. So this is a little thing in the neck. It regulates metabolism and energy and mood through its production of T4 thyroxin and T3 triiodothyronine. These are hormones that control many parts of our body's health and balance. And if they're off in small amounts, if there's too little, they can give rise to hypothyroidism via Hashimoto's disease or thyroid nodules or Graves' disease or more. And the thyroid is basically working by combining nutrients in novel ways. So once you realize that, getting the right amount of nutrients in the right balance is obviously very relevant. And there's good data saying that doing so can cut the risk of developing thyroid disease. The exciting part is that there's good evidence saying that you can often reverse thyroid disease as well by being strategic with nutrient intake. So which are the best vitamins and nutrients for thyroid health? First one to think about is selenium. This is one that is critical for T4 to T3 conversion and also diminishing thyroid antibodies. There's good data saying that if thyroid antibodies are high, they can cause symptoms even if thyroid levels are normal. We get selenium from Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, and lentils. Another critical nutrient is vitamin A. The relevance here is that vitamin A relevates, regulates gene expression in response to TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. And we also know that vitamin A has to be converted. The body converts beta carotene carotenoids into the more active vitamin A compound. And thyroid abnormalities can make that more difficult. So adding in rich dietary sources of vitamin A, clinical trials have shown that doing so can lower TSH when it's, when it's too high and elevate T3 when it's too low. This is true for women with suboptimal thyroid function. Zinc is one of our next important nutrients. There's good data showing that zinc supports proper TSH production, and it also plays a role in converting T4 into T3. Zinc is also needed for healthy immune response. It turns out that we get some from the diet, but extra amounts can be useful. But excessive amounts can disrupt copper and cause other problems. You know, 10 to 12 milligrams per day is a nice amount for supplemental zinc for most adults. Vitamin D is another critical nutrient. This one has been shown to lower antibodies when they're too high. It's also important for regulating the overall immune response. Vitamin D, the thing here is that there's not a lot of dietary sources of it. There's a little vitamin D in some foods, but honestly not enough to really make a difference. So we can make some from sunlight, but in the modern world, we're not outside exposing our skin often enough. Most people are not. So vitamin D generally is one that requires supplementation. Most adults need about a thousand IUs to achieve blood levels of 30 to 50 nanograms per mil of vitamin D. And that's the sweet spot. It's kind of weird. You'll hear some experts say that you need much higher levels. What's happened is that there's different units of vitamin D for blood tests in the US versus Europe. And a lot of the clinical studies were talking about the European blood levels, which are nanomoles per mil. Those are 2.5 times higher than nanograms per mil, which is what we use in the US for our blood tests, kind of like kilometers versus miles, you know? And so a lot of studies were written in the European metric units and people failed to convert those to the standard American units. So that's why some say you need more, not because studies showed you need that much, but because studies showed you need higher numbers in different units. <laughs> kind of like yeah, your speedometer in miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. Vitamin C is a big one too, for a lot of facets of health, including thyroid function. We know that vitamin C protects thyroid cells from oxidative stress, and it also helps the body more effectively absorb thyroid medication if those people are taking it. There's good data too that vitamin C can stabilize thyroid hormone levels in those with gut permeability and digestive problems. And on the flip side, we want to think about nutrient pitfalls, you know, nutrients we can get too much of. The leader of this gang here is iodine. So it's funny because we need iodine for thyroid production. It's the star of the show. But the trick is we get enough and many people get too much. And if you get even a slight excess, that by itself can cause or worsen autoimmune thyroid disease. And even separate from autoimmunity, it can directly slow the thyroid health. So the trick with maintaining better thyroid function is avoiding the excessive sources of that from things like seaweed or processed grains or dairy or other 
overly iodine dense foods. Other things to think about, B vitamins, people with thyroid disease, they can struggle if they get way too much synthetic B vitamins. Some of the big offenders here are synthetic B6, also called pyridoxine hydrochloride, and folic acid. The reason for that is many with thyroid disease have gene variations that make them not activate those quite as well. And especially when synthetic B6 is taken in high amounts, it can be a big cause of fatigue, anxiety, nerve pain, and other symptoms. Another one that's often not thought of is manganese. So if you get way too much manganese, that can slow your thyroid. And there's good data showing that we generally do get enough. People really don't get deficient in that. So when I formulate vitamins, I don't add any or much extra manganese. But those that supply even five milligrams or more can be problematic for those with thyroid disease. Now, iron's an important one to consider. We need it, and many with thyroid disease can be too low in that. But the drawback is that if one doesn't need iron, it's problematic for the body. And if iron is taken well physically combined in a pill with other vitamins, the other ones won't absorb as well. So that's why I've kept iron out of the thyroid daily multivitamin. If iron is inside of that, the antioxidants would be less effective and the trace minerals wouldn't absorb quite as well. Those are the big drawbacks. And it's important to dial in your nutrients because we've got clear data that selenium deficiencies, those raise the risk of autoimmune thyroid disease. Low vitamin D levels, they also raise the risk of thyroid cancer and many other versions of autoimmune thyroid disease. Low vitamin A can cause a poor response of TSH. Zinc deficiency worsens the immune system and makes thyroid weight gain more of a problem. So the important thing is really, you know, balance meals, not being on a highly restrictive diet, getting a lot of foods dense in all of these key nutrients. I also made thyroid daily as an easy one a day to help support good thyroid health specifically. And the thing is, you know, multis are such a good idea because almost every nutrient has a role to play, but the amount that you need and the type that you need is different for those with thyroid disease. So Thyroid Daily is a one-a-day thyroid-specific multivitamin. And by itself, it goes a long ways towards preventing nutrient problems for thyroid disease. For timing Thyroid Daily, you'd want that with a meal and an hour after thyroid medication for those who are on thyroid medication. When you do change your diet, if you're getting lower in iodine, if you're adding in good nutrients in, the, in terms of foods or the right supplements, you want to keep tabs on your thyroid levels. It's quite common that people can find out that they need changes to their medication or their levels have improved with just that if nutrients are included. And it's also worth being aware of some nutrients to where the dosing is more targeted. The big ones here are going to be vitamin D and iron. These are ones that, based upon tests, you may or may not need, or you may need amounts that are different than someone else's would be. So overall, food first is the best way to go for thyroid disease. In most cases, by getting the right kind of micronutrients from your diet and supplements, you can radically improve symptoms and in many cases prevent disease and often even reverse it when it's already there. And that's the point. We want to feel better. We want to do so in a way that's safe and natural. And I believe that's possible for you. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care. We'll talk again real soon.